so to begin, let's go over one of the questions in the homework. Uh, so this is from the first counting and combinatorics class. Uh, and the question that I want to talk about is the first question. So the question goes like this. Uh, how many ways can we make a four-digit number from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Okay. Uh, the question itself um, is not easy to read because it's trying to use some a humorous way to describe the question. It says there are two additional conditions. The first one is uh, requiring the four digits to be distinct. The other condition is to require the numbers to be even. So if you read the end of the question, there are actually four parts in the question. They said I do not require any of this condition AB. I require the condition of A, meaning distinct. I require the condition to be even, and then I require both of them. So there are kind of four parts in the questions. So many of you uh, skip or miss kind of some of the questions. Okay? So let's do this one by one. So empty, this is an empty set. Okay? It means uh, we can cover this up. Just how many different ways to make a four digit numbers uh, from one, two, three, four, five. Um, so this is the what I describe as the most important part of this counting and combinatorics class, which is the three principles: addition, multiplication, and subtraction. Um, so for multiplication, uh, we want to make a four digit numbers out of these five numbers. And what we want to do is, um, you have basically four choices. Putting a numbers here, putting a, putting a digit here, putting a digit here, and putting a digit here. And to apply the multiplication principle, you want to order the four choices in a way that no matter what the first choice is, they are still the same number of options for the second choice. No matter what the option is for the second number, they are still the same number of choices, the same number of options for the third choice. Uh, so the first one, uh, if I just want to make a four digit number from one, two, three, four, five, how many choices do I have? How many options do I have for the first one? Five. Five. Now, uh, we do not know whether we pick one, two, three, four, five. However, do we know how many options do we have for the second choice? Anyone? Um, yes, we only have four. Uh, but we don't require them to be distinct. Yeah. Oh, we have five again. We have five again. And no. we less than ten. Um, so, exactly. Because we don't require them to be distinct, just kind of make a four digit number out, out of one, two, three, four, five, we basically have five options for each of the four choices. So this is the answer for this one, which is five times five times five times five. Okay, now the second one. We require the number to be, the four digits to be distinct. How many options are there for the first choice? Five. Five? What about the second one? Four. Four. Now, uh, this is where the, uh, the part that is implicit, but is extremely important. Okay? No matter what numbers you pick from, for, the first di for the thousand digit, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, the number of choices, the number of options for the second digit, for the hundred digits, is still four. So this is the independence of the multiplication principle. What about the tens digit? Three. Three. Daisy, what about this? Two. Two, okay. So this is the uh, condition A, which is five times four times three times two, which is 120. So now this one, we require the digit to be 
we require the four digit number to be even. How many choices are there? Five. Five. This one? Four. Four. This one? Three. Three. This one? The last one? Hmm? Should we do that one first? Yeah, we should have done that one first. So I, I trick all of you. Okay. So the problem, this, this the, the answer for the last one cannot be answered is the answer for the unit digit now, the number of options, will be depends. Okay? We basically say we have five choices here, we have three here, we have three here. But think about one of those choices that we say we have made is let's say two, four, one. In this case, there's basically none of the, because the, re uh, well, um, I, think, I, I think if we just want to be even, um, well, actually this one, now that I think about it, we just require the number to be even, not even in this thing. So because of that, um, I think we, I mixed up the question a little. So for this one, uh, they, don't, they are not required to be distinct. So therefore, there are still five here. Okay. And there are still five options here. And the last one, there are two. two. Yep. So it's this one. Okay. So the last one is where I was trying to get to, which is if we require the numbers to be both distinct and even, now the order that you pick the digit matters. Okay. If we have started on the thousand digit now, the number of options for the unit digit is not fixed. It depends on what are the three choices that we have made. Because if we have picked the number two, four, one, then if we require the, the digits to be distinct and an even number, it's not possible because the remaining two digits, three and five, are both odd. Um, so the way that you do this last part, uh, both distinct and even, is you have to pick the unit digit first. And how many options are there for the unit digits such that it's an even number? Two. Two. What about then we do not know whether we have picked them, we have chosen the two or four for the unit digit. But how many options do we have for the tens digit? Four. Four? Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether I have chosen two or four. There are always kind of four remaining options here. And then similarly, we have now three, we have now two. So this is the answer. Can I get a sign from everyone so far? Okay, great. Uh, let's do one more question before we get to today's lecture. So one of the question is, uh, 50 factorial, how many ending zeros are there? Okay. So remember, uh, 50 factorial is basically 1 times 2 times 3 times 50. Okay. And Every integer, every whole number, can be written in the form like this. 2 to the power a, 3 to the power b, 5 to the power c, 7 to the power d, etc. So these are what we call the prime number. Numbers that can only be divided by 1 and itself, 
So this, this is what we call prime number. And in the end, basically the number of n and zero depends on how many depends on how many what is the 10 to the power that we can multiply this number from. So what I meant is let's say three two four zero 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 then we know this is equal to 10 to the power 3 times 3 to 4. So what we are really counting here is how many, what is the, what is the largest number of the power of 10 that we can pull up. And we also know 10 is equal to, we also know 10 is equal to 2 times 5, right? So when you think about this kind of um, factorial, there are many, many tools here. So we don't know what, the, what A is, but A is definitely bigger than C. Because there are two, there are four, there are six, there are eight. So the number A is going to be, two to the power A is going to be very, very big. So then what it means is we basically want to count how many fives are there in this kind of multiple. So we know we have 5, we have 10, we have 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. So basically 5, multiple 5, appears once every 5 numbers. So therefore we can basically just say, okay, 50 divided by 5. However, this is not the correct answer. I think in the class we talk about it because sometimes if you look at 25, 25 is actually 5 to the power 2, 50 is 5 to the power 2 times 2. So these two numbers, once every 25 numbers, we have 5 to the power 2. So therefore, it is this is counting how many multiples of 5, and this is counting how many multiples of 25, which, which contribute 2 to the index C. So there's this symbol, uh, which basically means I just want the integer. I do not care about the decimal. But in this case, it's, it's the same. So it's 12. Again, I, I want to explain what this symbol is. What this symbol is, if you have a decimal number, I basically say I just want the integer R. Okay, so this is a common mathematics symbol. Uh, if you have a uh, if you have let's say thirteen over two, if you take the integer part, what is it? Six. Six. Okay. So it's uh, just a mathematics symbol. So that's it. Uh, so those are the two questions that I want to cover.